This instructional companion on slider rods falls under the major topic dynamics and vibrations which contains the following five chapters properties of solid bodies, kinematics which is where this falls, kinetics, mechanisms and power transmission systems, and vibrating systems. In the chapter on kinematics there's a great many topics, a lot of particle motion, distance to speed, uniform motion acceleration, lots of things on projectile motion, Norman Coriolis acceleration, relative motion, dependent motion, uh, lots of plane motion, uh, and here on slider rods is where we're going to be working here. Okay, a slider rod is essentially a rod, this is the actual rigid body, AB, uh, it's connected to some blocks uh, that are confined uh, uh, to move either vertical or horizontal. Typically that's the standard. You could have them at other angles, but that would only complicate things. This is actually a problem from the uh, NCS sample exam, but it's also an MERM example. Although no numbers are used. Uh, but he uses the instantaneous center principle, which has some, has some limitations. But again, this is an NC. ES sample uh, problem, but it is in the uh, mechanical systems PM exam. Okay, and what it, what we have here is uh, point A is moves vertically down at three meters per second. Block B moves to the right at four at this particular at the instant shown. Remember, you're not finding it for all time t for the instant shown. Uh, we're at this particular position and velocity, of course those would change over time, but this, this click, um, 3 meters per second here to down, 4 meters per second to the right. The question is, and this is the NCS uh, sample question, determine the velocity, um, that's the absolute uh, velocity, uh, of the midpoint of point C here uh, of member AB. And uh, we would need the length AB, but they don't give it to you, so we're just going to call it L. Um, to keep from writing AB all the time. Um, and so away we go. Okay. Well, the first thing to do is to write down an equation relating the various points. And since we need the velocity of C, that would make sense. So let's do that. So what I've written down, the velocity of C is the velocity of A, which we know about, all about its magnitude and direction, plus the velocity of C relative to A, as if A is fixed. Well, I like to kind of draw a little picture to go with that. Okay, to save YouTube time, I've kind of drawn the figure here. Here's our uh, member, uh, kind of a little bit shorter. But point C is here, and the velocity of C relative to A is if A is fixed, so that moves in a circle, so it's perpendicular to that. Uh, it is going to be R omega. In this case, it's at the midpoint, so it's L over 2 is the R. Omega AB, I've shown it in the uh, counterclockwise direction. I think that's the way it's going to go, but uh, again, if it comes out in the end uh, as a negative, it was the other way. Don't agonize over which way. If you don't know, pick one and then uh, keep that in mind and go from there. Okay. Um, and at this particular angle, um, the reference here is theta, so there is theta. So what we can do is break up V sub C A into components, cosine theta and sine theta, and we'll do that in uh, the equations here um, in next. So again, to save YouTube time, I've drawn our standard coordinate system, x, y, and counterclockwise. Again, I did that over here with omega a, b. And now I just break this um, vector equation up into two scalar components. Well, in the x direction, well, we don't know the velocity of c. It's got both an x and y, so we break that up into v, c, x, and v, c, y. Just make them positive. But in uh, vector or velocity of a, well, it doesn't have an x, so we put a zero there. And it has a y, but it's downward, minus 3 meters per second squared. Then we have the components of the VCA, which is the L over 2 omega uh, AB, and the horizontal is cosine, and the uh, vertical is sine. So we've got two equations, but unfortunately we've got three unknowns. We've got VCX, VCY, and omega AB. So this tells us that we're going to have to find omega AB before we can actually proceed any farther. We'll do that on the next page. Okay, you might have done this first, but we need to have an equation in which we know everything but omega. So what we might write down, since we know everything about a and b, is we might write down this equation, vector equation, remember. Now, 
in the MERM, it may, it may have bold here. So we got the velocity of B plus the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of A. We know both of those plus the velocity of B relative to A as if A is fixed. Well, let's look at that like we did the velocity of C relative to A. So we, as we did on the previous page, we draw a little picture here. We've got our omega AB, uh, velocity of B relative to A as if A is fixed. Well, if A is fixed, then B can only rotate in a circle. So the velocity is just R omega. Its length is L, omega AB. Uh, it's at an angle theta. We aren't given that. Uh, that's what the, the, the solution or the development in the MERM uh, relies on the, uh, on knowing that. Well, oops, well, not, they're not, it's not given here. might say it ought to be, but it doesn't surprise me, actually, when you look at the problem. So we've got uh, this term, and it's got a cosine uh, horizontal term and a sine vertical term. So let's do the same thing we did on the previous page. So again, to save YouTube time, I've... Uh, taking the coordinate system, positive x and y and counterclockwise. Uh, B has 4, it doesn't, uh, A doesn't have a horizontal, and then we've got our L omega AB cosine theta. Well, we've got equations 1 and 2 on the previous page, so let's make these 3 and 4. Uh, for the y component, B doesn't have 1, it's got a 0, just like A didn't have a horizontal, minus 3 meters per second. I like to carry along the units, I don't want to just have 3 and 4. And then, of course, L omega AB uh, sine theta. So we've got uh, really a, uh, an equation that's got uh, two unknowns, really, uh, omega AB and, and theta. But theta is in sine and cosine, so that's really not linear. It's sort of nonlinear. So I'm going to have to kind of go around the, uh, around the horn here, solve for d omega AB in both, equate them, and see what we get. So let's do that. So if we solve for omega a, b, and 3, we have get uh, 4 meters per second divided by L cosine theta. From 4, we get omega a, b is 3 meters per second divided by L sine, uh, sine theta. So what we can do is equate those and see what we get. So what we've got is 4 meters per second over L cosine theta, 3 meters per second over L sine theta. So the two L's cancel, so that goes away. What we end up with, if we take sine over here and 4 over there, we get the following. So we end up with is sine theta over cosine theta equal 3 fourths. Well, this is, uh, you almost could see this coming with the 3 and the 4 and the 3, 4, 5 triangle. So we end up with is tangent theta equals 3 fourths, and so theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 fourths, and that's uh, the special 3, 4, 5 triangle. So essentially the, uh, the sine is 3 fifths and the cosine is 4 fifths. So we can now go back to the, the previous set of equations and see, take that information and now find omega AB uh, into 3 and 4, well, either one. Almost got a little head here. Uh, from either 3 or 4, we can now take that um, 3, 4, 5 triangle where cosine is 4 fifths and sine is 3 fifths, 3, 4, 5. Was what we figured out here. Well, we, either way, we get 5 over L. Of course, we've got 5 meters per second in the numerator. L will have meters, so really what both of these will be is in uh, radians per second when we get through with putting those in. And that's what we need omega in. The units will be radians per second. Okay, now what I want is getting ready to write here. Substitute uh, into uh, 1 and 2. And we'll do that. Okay, we can do these uh, one at a time. 1 becomes, if you remember, b sub x was equal to 0, so that goes away. We had L over 2 omega AB cosine theta. Well, now we've got L over 2 times 5 over L. So you see the L's cancel, so it didn't matter what it was. Uh, people making up the exam love that to happen. Uh, and also the 5's cancel, and so you're left with 4 over 2, or 2 meters per second. And realize you came out with positive, okay? So therefore, it is, in fact, to the right, which is what you thought anyway, okay? Let's look at the other one. Okay, if you look at the other one, we had uh, VCY had a minus 3 meters per second plus the L over 2 omega AB sine theta. We've got the minus 3 meters per second. We've got the L over 2, 5 over L. So again, the L's cancel. And times the sine, 3, fifth, three fifths. So the 5's cancel. So we end up with minus 3 plus 3 halves. 3 halves is 1.5. So we end up with here is a minus 
uh, 1.5 meters per second and that is in the that direction the minus sign well that also would equal 1.5 meters per second I'm sorry a VCY that would be positive up sorry the minus sign the positive direction we had was up so this is going to be positive 1.5 meters per second down okay so we which is what we what we might have thought okay so now we've got 2 and 1.5 we can now take the square root of the sum of the squares and come up with our velocity we'll do on that do that on the next page okay oh, well for any vector you've got the x and y the uh, magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares well the v uh, the vx is 2 meters per second the vy came out to be minus uh, the change around there was just to, to put it on the diagram but we want to use the actual number minus 1.5 meters per second square it and when we get through that comes out to be a nice round number of uh, 2.5 meters per second and it's in the direction uh, that you would you would have here to write uh, 1.5 down okay now um, you know, for the two numbers you've got up here uh, this looks like uh, VCX was just equal to uh, half of VB and this looks like uh, VCY was just equal to half of VA well and could you have said that well, I don't know of anything that would have justified saying it. It turned out to be that way. Uh, I don't know. But what I do want, want you to come across is that uh, this is a way in which you can solve all the problems. The uh, instantaneous center is very graphically intensive. Uh, I was shown that one uh, when I came through, and I, it never warmed up to me. And after teaching dynamics for almost 30 years, uh, no, that doesn't, that doesn't win. Uh, also, uh, the uh, solution in the NCS uh, sample exam is all about vectors, I, J, K, which is... Uh, uh, not for 2D. Uh, I did that one year. 3D, yes, you got to use IJK, no matter whether you're doing statics or dynamics. Uh, one year I tried to do holistics and, and do everything, both 3D and 2D. Uh, that didn't work either. So um, uh, use a scalar geometric that we have here. Okay. So this is a great problem. I uh, hope, hope this uh, helps you pass the exam. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.